Al Salam Foundation is the next speaker. السيد نائب الرئيس السلام أمريكيون من أجل الديمقراطية وحقوق الإنسان في البحرين تعبر عن عميق قلقها من جدية التزام حكومة البحرين بآليات الاستعراض الدوري الشامل اليو بي آر فمنذ اندلاع الحراك الشعبي المطالب بالديمقراطية وحقوق الإنسان وحق تقرير المصير في فبراير 2011 دابت حكومة البحرين على انتهاج سياسة القمع والانتهاكات الممنهجة لحقوق الإنسان ادعى وفد حكومة البحرين بأن آلية المراجعة الشاملة هي فرصة لإسقاط الضوء على الإنجازات الحقوقية للمملكة سؤال النشطاء والمجتمع المدني في البحرين هل من هذه الإنجازات اعتقال نبيل رجب وسجنه من أجل تغريدة اعتقال وتعذيب والتعرض لكرامة الناشطة ابتسام الصائغ الحكم المؤبد لعبد الهادي الخواجة لعمله الحقوقي حل جمعية الوفاق وسجن أمينها العام الشيخ علي سلمان لممارسته العمل السياسي اقفال صحيفة الوسط الصحيفة المستقلة الوحيدة في البحرين سحب جنسية الشيخ عيسى أحمد قاسم ووضعه تحت الإقامة الجبرية الحكم المؤبد للأستاذين عبد الوهاب حسين وحسن مشيمع وهم من طالبوا بتحقيق الديمقراطية في البحرين تدعي حكومة البحرين مرارا بأنه لا يوجد أحد فوق القانون مهما كانت شعبيته ومكانته الاجتماعية فهل نفهم من ذلك بأن حكومة البحرين ستقوم فورا بالتحقيق مع الرئيس السابق لجهاز الأمن الوطني طلال آل خليفة ورئيس الحرس الملكي ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة على خلفية الدعاءات جادة لتورطهم في جرائم تعذيب نشطاء حقوق الإنسان ومعارضين الحكومة البحرينية قبلت بالتوصيات الخاصة بحرية التعبير وأصرت بأن حرية التعبير مصانة ومضمونة في الدستور البحريني حتى تثبت حكومة البحرين جدية هذه الالتزامات هل هي مستعدة لإطلاق صراح كل من رفع شعار يسقط حمد؟ السيد الرئيس كل ما تقدم يوضح لنا شيء واحد وهو أن حكومة البحرين غير مستعدة وغير جادة بتنفيذ توصيات اليو بي آر وكل ما تدعيه ليس له صلة بالواقع أو كما يقال بالبحراني كل أهرار شكرا سيد نائب الرئيس Christian Human Rights in Bahrain would like to uh, raise concerns over the Bahraini government's declining engagement with the UPR process. Since the midterm of Bahrain's second cycle UPR in 2014, the government has not only failed to fully implement one of the 176 recommendations uh, it had received, but has actually regressed on what few reform areas had seen nominal progress. In the run-up to the third cycle of May 2017, the government further demonstrated its refusal to engage the process in good faith, submitting a national report that was, report that was misleading, vague, and incomplete. Complete. This failure was gravely exacerbated by the government's campaign to actively prevent independent Bahraini civil society from leaving the country to liaise with the international community. As a result of government interference, including widespread use of retaliatory travel bans and arbitrary detention, the number of independent Bahraini activists attending the UPR cycles dropped from dozens in 2012 to only three in 2017. Now, this year, the government has chosen to flout even more of its obligations, accepting just 139 of the 175 recommendation clusters it received in the third cycle. That is 17 less than the 158 it fully or partially accepted in 2012. Yet, as demonstrated by the rise in discrete recommendations and the reiteration of so many previous unimplemented reform proposals, Bahrain's human rights situation has only deteriorated since the second cycle UPR review. Uh, many of these recommendations continue to urge greater protections for freedom of expression and assembly, civil society and human rights defenders, and the country's marginalized Shia population. It is therefore imperative that the international community take steps beyond the UPR mechanism to follow up on the letter and spirit of the range of recommendations offered here. We urge all recommending states to actively and regularly work to follow up on the prescriptions offered in this review and hold Bahrain accountable for fulfilling its commitments today. Thank you. حقوق الإنسان للتآمر على حكومة البحرين والإساءة لإنجازات وهمية تدعيها فحكومة البحرين هي التي أساءت لوطنها بتقويد العمل السياسي والحقوق وحل جمعيتي وعد والوفاق وزج قادة المعارضة في السجون وحظر السفر للناشطين حكومة البحرين التي لم تنفذ توصيات الاستعراض الأول ولا الثاني ولا توصيات اللجنة المستقلة وأوصدت باب الحوار الوطني والسياسي وفرضت الإقامة الجبرية على الشيخ عيسى قاسم ورفضت زيارة مقرري التعذيب والتعبير والحريات الدينية وتمارس التمييز الطائفي والسياسي هي التي تشوه صورة البحرين جئنا إلى جلسة الاستعراض لنقول لحكومة البحرين ألا يكفي سبع سنوات من القمع والتعذيب والإعدام والاختفاء القصري وضرب كل مظاهر الحياة 
المدنية والصحفية ألم تتعد حكومة البحرين من فشلها ومن الإدانة العالمية بحيث لم تبقى إلا دولة واحدة لم تنتقد حكومة البحرين وهي مملكة البحرين نقول لحكومة البحرين كفى ترهيب الحقوقيين والمعارضين وبالتمرد على قرار المجلس لقم 16 كما قال رئيس المجلس اليوم نطلب من المجلس باتخاذ مواقف حازمة لأن التساهل معها على شجعها على التمادي في صح الجسم الحقوقي حيث أصبحت مملكة البحرين سجنا نطالب بإقفاله عودة الحياة المدنية والديمقراطية الإفراج عن كافة سجناء الرأي رفع الإقامة الجبرية عن الشيخ عيسى قاسم حل جهاز الأمن الوطني إلغاء مرسوم القضاء العسكري حل المؤسسة الوطنية لحقوق الإنسان لأنها لم تشكل على أساس مبادئ باريس وضع جدول زمني لتنفيذ التوصيات وليس فقط قبولها إعلاميا السماح للمقرر المعني للتعذيب بزيارة البحرين الضغط على الحكومة البريطانية لإيقاف تعاونها الأمني مع البحرين وعدم تزويدها بالمعددات العسكرية كالولايات المتحدة والبرازيل to bring Bahraini criminal law and prosecutions into full compliance with international human rights law, including the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and to cease reprisals against human rights defenders. During its second UPR, Bahrain accepted numerous similar recommendations to release human rights defenders and to allow expression, assembly, and association rights. However, Bahrain has not yet implemented any of those recommendations. Such failure demonstrates disrespect for the UPR process and the states making recommendations, and also suggests Bahrain's intention to continue to arbitrarily imprison and severely punish those promoting and protecting human rights through the peaceful and legitimate exercise of rights to expression, association, and assembly. Lawyers Rights Watch Canada ask Council to directly call on Bahrain to release all arbitrarily imprisoned people, including Nabil Rajib and Abdullah Al Kawaja to bring its laws into full compliance with the UDHR and to allow UN special procedure mandate holders to visit Bahrain and conduct the investigations necessary to recommend reform and regress for victims of rights violations. Thank you. Human Rights League says the floor. Mr. President, today's final outcome report for the UPR of Bahrain raises serious concerns about Bahrain's commitment to human rights protection. The UPR review was marked by the Kingdom's denials of all serious violations as reports emerge of systematic travel bans, judicial harassments, and even torture being used to exclude prominent human rights defenders from the UPR process. During the UPR review, several recommendations were made to the government of Bahrain concerning the treatment of their detainees, torture allegations, and the protection of human rights defenders who wish to cooperate with the UN. But since the UPR, the Kingdom has perpetrated more human rights violations. On May 26, a few weeks after the UPR review, Women human rights defender Ibtissam al Saeg was summoned by the National Security Agency, tortured and raped by her, by her interrogators. Ibtissam previously engaged in UPR-related advocacy activities. In the last week, according to BCHR's reports, the Bahraini government issued over 20 summons calling activists, opposition members, journalists and human rights defenders to interrogation by the terrorist prosecution. Amongst them, there were also human rights lawyers and four BCHR members, all charged under the new, the new anti-terrorism law. FIDH and BCHR regret that Bahrain refused to commit to repeal its anti-terrorism law, while the Bahraini authorities are using these laws provisions to persecute human rights defenders and to enforce censorship on social media. On July of 2017, President of BCHR and Deputy Secretary General of FIDH Nabil Rajab was sentenced to two years of imprisonment after an unfair trial. The process of Rajab's trial has come under massive criticism from the international community as the trial has been subject to a series of delays, a lack of legal evidence for the charges and ill treatment during detention. Finally, Bahrain pledged to cooperate with the Human Rights Council and its mechanisms but failed to invite key special rapporteurs anytime soon. We urge the government to respond to many credible allegations of serious human rights violations by inviting an OHCHR team to visit the country. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Since June 2016, the Bahraini authorities have dramatically stepped up their crackdown on dissent. As a result, Bahrain's formerly thriving civil society has found itself reduced to a few lone voices brave enough to still speak out. The crackdown has extended to this council, 
where human rights defenders have faced reprisals for seeking to cooperate with the, with the UN, including travel bans to prevent them from traveling to Geneva to participate in Bahrain's UPR and sessions of this council. Human rights defenders and political activists are also subjected to arbitrary arrest and detention and torture. This includes prominent human rights defenders Nabil Rajab, currently in prison, and Ebtisam El Saag, who was tortured while being interrogated about her human rights work, including her, her participation in the 31st session of this council. The families of human rights defenders living outside Bahrain have also been targeted as a direct reprisal for defenders speaking out at this council. Relatives have been interrogated about their family members' human rights activities and subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention and torture. We welcome Bahrain's acceptance of recommendations to allow Bahraini human rights defenders to cooperate with the UN human rights mechanisms free from reprisals and to ensure accountability for all perpetrators of torture and ill treatment. Amnesty considers human rights defenders Nabil Rajab Ebtisam al Saq and political leaders Sheikh Ali Salman and Fadel Abbas Mahdi Mohammed to be prisoners of conscience and calls for their immediate release. We welcome Bahrain accept of recommendations to release those detained for exercising their rights to freedom of expression and peace, peaceful assembly and to repeal legislation impeding those rights. We urge Bahrain to ensure their immediate implementation. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The human rights situation in Bahrain has deteriorated dramatically in the period leading up to and since Bahrain's third UPR in May 2017. The government had accepted 158 of the 176 UPR recommendations from 2012, but has largely failed to implement the most substantive of them. Bahrain continues to deny access to UNOHCHR special procedures despite repeated requests. Authorities in April prevented dozens of rights advocates from traveling to Geneva ahead of the third UPR review. Over the past year, authorities have shut down the country's only independent newspaper and the two leading licensed opposition political societies. Nabil Rajab, the country's preeminent human rights defender, and Sheikh Ali Salman, the leader of the largest opposition political society, remain in prison on speech charges. The government ended a de facto moratorium on the use of the death penalty and ex ex executed three persons in January following unfair trials despite their alleging that they had been tortured. In May, the UN Committee Against Torture expressed concern at consistent allegations of widespread torture and ill-treatment and the climate of impunity that seems to prevail. In 2017, the government reversed two of the few substantive recommendations of the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry that it had previously implemented. In January, authorities restored arrest and investigation powers to the National Security Agency, despite its record of torture and abuse, and in April, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa signed legislation authorizing trial of civilians before military courts. We urge Bahrain to accept and implement the most important recommendations coming out of its 2017 review regarding criminal justice reform and respect for all core human rights, including the release of all those jailed solely for exercising their rights to freedom of expression, association, and peaceful assembly. Bahrain's glossy PR campaign around its UPR engagement cannot be allowed to cover up its complete disregard for the substantive recommendations made, nor the human rights crisis on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Marriage Foundation. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Our organization welcomes the recommendations made by states to Bahrain in the 27th session of the UPR, particularly in relation to the recommendations on family law and nationality. Bahrain has worked hard to address the recommendations on family law and citizenship to meet its aspirations to build a society based on human rights, norms, and standards. The Supreme Council for Women has conducted a study of the effect of application of the Family Provisions Act in the Sharia Court. We appreciate the publication of a set of brochures to explain in simple terms the articles of the Family Provisions Act and to provide information about legal services for women. Awareness programs and media campaigns have also been conducted to raise awareness of the provisions in the Act 
and the importance of the promulgation of Section 2. Concerning nationality, we would like to commend the Supreme Council for Women, which pays particular attention to the subject of the children of Bahraini women married to foreigners and seeks to improve their situation through its contribution to taking the necessary measures to access the services available to citizens. The cabinet has issued a decision approving a draft law amending certain provisions of the Bahraini Nationality Act, allowing Bahraini citizenship to be granted to these children under specific rules and criteria. It has been referred Thank to you. the sense of meaningful implementation of UPR recommendations in Bahrain. Many of these recommendations were a repetition of previous UPR and BICR recommendation, and this proves there have been no genuine efforts of the, of the government to improve human rights situation in the country over the last five years. During the period, Bahrain has rather transformed into a police state full of torture, killing, travel ban, sectarian persecution, and targeting human rights defenders and political activists and their families. It witnessed an escalating record of execution, political arrest, and citizenship revocation against dissidents and their family members, and forcible deportation. Duras village has been under total siege more than a year. Numerous activities are tortured, including Ibtisam al sayyid and Ibrahim Sarhan, while a number of political parties and civil associations like Al-Wafaq are dissolved. These abuses come on the heels of intensified violence perpetrated by the broader security establishment culminating in the deadly May 2017 raid on a peaceful demonstration in Duraz by killing five and detaining almost 300 and keeping Sheikh Isa Qasim under house arrest after stripping his nationality. We therefore strongly urge the government of Bahrain of immediately to stop all forms of repression and political retaliation against human rights defenders and opposition figures and make a genuine implementation of the UPR recommendation as well as BICI report and start immediately a genuine reform and dialogue with opposition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.